Hello friends, welcome back to the Red Target multiplayer server. And I just thought I would show you what I have done with uh, the zombie spawner that uh, is mine, or at least I am claiming ownership to. The one that is by where I was building my underground base. And you can probably already hear behind me, but this is what I have been doing. So um, I am actually a little bit proud of what I've made here only because, I don't think that it's anything great, but only because I didn't copy uh, something from somebody else. Normally with something like this, I would go online and find somebody who's done this and just do what they have done and copy it because I know it's going to work. Um, but I wanted to try to do this on my own, and I did. Now, I don't think that that means I have anything different or unique uh, with as many people that are playing Minecraft. I am sure that uh, anything, everything's been done that I could possibly do. But uh, I was just proud of myself for having come up with this all on my own. And it shows because it's not very efficient, it's not very compact, and it doesn't work all that great. So <laughs> uh, that being said, I'm still proud of the fact that I was able to, uh, to do this without uh, much help, without any help actually. Um, yeah, other than uh, this pulse limiter, limit, limiter, pulse shortening circuit, which I had to look up how to make one of those. Um, but other than that, I this down here is the container for the zombie spawner. And if we punch a hole in it, punch another hole in it, there you can see the zombie spawner. And I have redstone uh, lamps in the ceiling, which keep it lit when I want it to not spawn. In other words, when I want the spawner off, and I can uh, turn the lights on, or turn the lights off with this lever, which will make it dark in there, and then the zombies will spawn. Now, I really like building with this clay. This is orange stained clay, and, and this was nice because I didn't have to actually make this. I went over to the Mesa biome and just bind up a whole ton of orange stained clay, and I didn't have to, to make it uh, the hard way. Uh, and what I like about it is not not coloring and, and not the fact that you can do lots of different colorful things with stained clay like I tried to do over here with my filing computer. Uh, I, I tried to come up with something clever and I think I failed miserably. I'm not good at, at mixing colors and, and I don't have an eye for that kind of stuff. What I like about it is the simple fact that it stands out from anything else that you're that's going to be in this area. Uh, there's not going to be any natural... Uh, orange clay in this area and so when I built the box around the zombie spawner with the orange clay now when I'm digging around it and doing stuff if I come in if I dig and I come to the clay I know that that's where the the zombie spawner is so um, it just makes it, it just makes it stand out as far as where you have put something that you don't want to have uh, changed or damaged so anyway, uh, this is a, a basic zombie spawn catching thing with running water. The water flows down into the trough here, and the zombies will get pushed down into this location. And there you can see some zombies spawning. And what happens here is I made a little baby zombie filter. So um, the water, as you can see, flows under there, but it's only one block tall under there. So only the baby zombies can fit and they will just slide off into uh, a pit of lava and die. The adult zombies uh, can't slide past that because they're two blocks tall, so they stop at this point, and this simple water elevator will take them upwards. And uh, I could sit here for a while and hope for a baby zombie to come along, but that's probably not going to, to happen on camera easily for me. So going back up here, again, the, the uh, water elevator brings the zombies up to here, and this water chute, there goes one right there, this water chute will push them along down this long tunnel to here. This is what I call my analysis chamber. So uh, right there, you can barely see, is a fence gate. Uh, and I think if I run around to the top of this, I can show it a little bit better. So you can see the zombies come there, and oh, there's an opening here. Close that off just in case. So you can see there's a fence gate there. Uh, and uh, it, uh, it uh, stops the zombies when it's triggered by a tripwire 
which is running right along here. So it's normally open, and when a zombie falls through, it'll trigger the tripwire, which will close that gate, and then another zombie, hopefully, won't fall in there. So this is the analysis chamber, as I said, and I can look at this and see this zombie and say, okay, he is not a villager zombie, so I don't want him, and I can hit the reject button. And all that does is it'll, it'll uses a piston to pull that block back, and we'll drop the next zombie down. Now you see one of the problems that I have with this build in that when the zombies, when there are a lot of zombies and they get backed up in this area, the uh, it, it, they'll sometimes more than one will drop down when the uh, when I re when I hit the reject button. So that's like I said, it's not a perfect build in any shape sense of the word. But you can see they come down and then I can reject the ones I don't want. They will run into the thing and just had to push this guy over a little bit he's glitched in the the block but he's really there and reject him and then you know they keep dropping and then until i get a villager zombie i can just keep uh rejecting these guys like this so when i reject them where do they go well very simply they come down here they fall down to here and this oops falling all over the place i apologize all right, they fall down to here, and this uh, chute will take them to another water elevator there, which goes up and around, and it takes them down past this area and into where my skeleton spawner is at. There they come. Hello, dude. Where are you going? Where are you going, buddy? You going over there? Yeah, you are going over there. And then they drop down into where my skeleton spawner is. And, of course, my skeleton spawner is set up that everything funnels down to this 30 XP level detector block. So see, the zombies just end up making their way down into here onto this pressure plate, which I've explained in a previous video, that will detect when 30 levels are done. This is, of course, a zoom avoid video that I copied. Again, usually I copy stuff. So it just feeds them over to there. And the reason that this works out for me, if you remember, this light will tell me when this light comes on, that means that there's enough zombies in there, or enough uh, uh, monsters in there at least, to uh, trigger 30 levels, 30 experience levels. And you'll notice that if I'm standing here rejecting zombies by pushing the button, I can look over and I can see that light. So that's really nice because it means that as I reject the zombies, if I happen to go through a lot of them prior to finding a, a, a villager zombie, I will... Uh, I will at least be able to use them to gain some levels and that's very nice so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and reject these until I get a villager zombie and I'll show you what happens at that point okay and so now we have a zombie villager you can see his little uh, his big old beaky nose on there Squidward they called them or squid noses or whatever they call them uh, but those are the zombie villagers and so now all I need to do is get a minecart, which I usually keep in this uh, chest here, but apparently I have them in my inventory. And sometimes when I push this up there, it will get him into it, but not always. And so when it does it, all I have to do is kind of nudge him over to the side there. There we go. And now when I do it, it'll pick him up. See, just like that. And then he'll come out, and of course, since he's on a minecart, I can pretty much put him uh, wherever I might want to put him. And so what I've been doing, as you can see here, is I made these little chambers where these guys are at. Now, that's not actually what I want to ultimately do with them. Um, I, and, and by that, I mean I don't want to have them inside of chambers like that. I just, uh, I know that is the typical way to do it, but I just don't like the way that it looks. So if I do anything more with this, and I'm not entirely sure that I will, what I will actually end up doing is um, making them uh, houses. And I already even kind of know where I would do it. Let me just take out this track, and I'm just building this guy a, a little area. Um, what I'd like to do is I think I can run this around back behind here. And through this door is sort of my... This is kind of the area where I've been doing a lot of strip mining, but I think I could um, hollow this out a lot and build some houses back here uh, for these guys to stay in. Um, I do, you know, if, if I do any more with this, again, it would probably be a thing where I would work on, on doing 
uh, maybe finding a perfect villager, as uh, Doc M describes in his videos. Um, it would be nice to have a perfect blacksmith villager, so I can have all the uh, diamond tools that I could possibly want. But I'm not going to do it where I keep these guys in this uh, nasty type of uh, captivity like this. I would rather build them uh, a village and have them uh, have a semblance of a life, even though they will still be my captives, but it will be more pleasant than being in these little uh, hobbles. I've got a villager running around somewhere. When I was first testing this, I made my first villager. I didn't know that when this guy becomes a villager, becomes cured, he actually will pop out of the minecart. So I had the minecart just sitting over here, and he cured and he was out of the minecart and running off before I could I could stop him. I have no clue where he is. I have a suspicion that he ended up over in the nether. But uh, anyway, he ran away somewhere. So, as I said, we've got the zombie villager, and I've got him in an area that's sort of contained. And so all you need now is a splash potion of weakness, and you probably already know how to cure a zombie villager. Most people do. You hit him with a splash potion of weakness, like so. And then you feed him this golden apple, like so. And you get that sound effect that sounds like, I don't know what that sounds like. It sounds like something crackling. And you can see he's kind of shaking and he's got these red particle effects that are coming off of him. I've got weakness particle effects coming off of me while they just expired. But uh, you can see these little red particle effects. So the time it takes for him to uh, be cured of zombieism and become a villager is usually between two to five minutes. And so during that time, I usually will just... Uh, run over here to where the zombies have accumulated and as you can see I don't really need 30 levels I have 34 levels and uh, I keep little splash potions of healing here and I can just throw this in there uh, well if I do it correctly first I have to hit this button to set the lava so I just wasted a splash potion but we'll take it and do it again and wait for them all to die and then I can collect all the XP as well as the useless zombie flesh and little bits of uh, armor that they may or may not have dropped. I can reset the trap. And I've got a lava pit here. I like to do the lava pit with this half block up here because then you can run up to it and you won't fall into it. It's very nice. And then I can just stand here and I can say, okay, rotten flesh, you get thrown away. Rotten flesh, you get thrown away. Leather boots, useless, you get thrown away. And looks like I got a potato and a carrot, which I won't throw away out of general principle. Looks like I also got an iron ingot. But anything that I didn't want, I can just toss in there. The reason that I think the villager went down here is because this is the only wooden door in the area. And uh, I believe that, if I understand uh, villager mechanics at all, that they consider doors to be entrances to homes. So I have a feeling that he may have ran down here, gone in through here, and then got transported over to the nether via my portal. Anyway, side note. So, uh, killed off the extra zombies, helped controlling some of the lag, and I just come over here and put away the uh, couple of vegetables I got and the little piece of iron I got. And uh, zombie villager still hasn't been cured yet. I have made an automatic melon harvesting uh, farm there, and it uh, operates fairly slowly. Uh, I would imagine that if I maybe dug a hole that went straight up to the sky, then it may grow faster? I'm not sure. It may also grow faster if this was accessible to the sky, but uh, it uses a basic bud switch to uh, harvest the melon, and I believe this is a Daedalus uh, design, so it works pretty good. The only thing I did is instead of pushing them into water, I push them into a hopper, uh, which feeds into a hopper, which feeds into the chest, which is good. And uh, that guy is still going. There's nothing else really to talk about. So I think I'll just cut until he becomes cured. Well, <laughs> that didn't take very long. There he is. So now, uh, as I said, I have a villager. He is not in the cart anymore. It may look like he is, but he isn't. there. You, actually, there you can see that he's not in the cart. And so that's what had happened with the... Uh, first zombie villager that I found, he was out of the cart and then already running off. I didn't know that they were going to pop out of the cart when they become cured. He is a blacksmith villager, which is good. So I need to keep him around 
and see if I can turn him into a perfect blacksmith. Uh, honestly, I think that the perfect blacksmith would be the only one I would really want. Um, this guy's a butcher villager, and I don't have an animal uh, set up, so he's not going to be of much use to me because I need 15 pork chops to get an emerald. So I, I don't have a use for him. Uh, this is a librarian villager. Paper, I do have my sugar farm way over there, and sh automatic sugar farms are easy to make, so it's possible that I may keep uh a librarian villager just to be able to get emeralds with which I can then use to hopefully get a perfect blacksmith villager and this is another librarian villager with the books books are harder for me because they do require a piece of leather and again since I don't have animals uh, I don't have access to leather so um, that kind of villager may not be as useful to me and uh, this is the farmer villager uh, where he's giving me apples and I don't need that because I have my tree farm over there where I get my apples from. So um, again I may not have much use for these particular villagers or any villager other than a perfect uh, blacksmith villager but I don't know yet what I'm going to do with the villagers that I don't want. Um, as I said I want to build this nice uh, village back here for all of the villagers and run and, and have them live there and have their own freedom of movement and motion and not have them cooped up in these little uh, containers but I will work on that at some point in time uh, it's not a critical thing for me and the only thing else I'll mention is that my original idea for how this would work is that I would have multiple uh, instances of this analysis chamber which is what I call it um, maybe just going in a I had a, I had an idea of them going in a circle so maybe there's three or four here and three or four on that side and then three or four there or uh, something like that and then feeding back into um, this water chute here so the idea is that the zombies would come along and this analysis chamber would be open so one would fall in here and close it off and then the next one would move on down this way. So maybe there's another one here, and, and if it's empty, he would fall in. And so they would keep moving around, falling into any empty an analysis chambers as they come across them. But if all of the analysis chambers are full, they would just enter into uh, the cycle again. Like they would just keep going round and round and round and round. And that's one aspect of a design that I don't think I ever saw in... Uh, videos that other people made of doing this uh, a lot of times they just once all the chambers were full all the rest of them just got set to either a lava pit or just got destroyed somehow I didn't want to do that I didn't want to waste any of them and then the idea was that uh, you know I can I could turn the zombie spawner on click and let it run and then I would come back and each one of the analysis chambers is full it has a zombie in it and then there's maybe more going around in the circle so I can come up and go, uh, nope, uh, delete, or, you know, reject it and have it go down to the uh, the 30 XP uh, switch over there. And then go to the next one, you know, reject it, next one, reject it, next one, reject it. And, and go all the way around the thing. And then perhaps by the time I got back around, these will have filled up again with the zombies that were going around and around uh, uh, with with the design that I wanted. And then uh, if one of them had the zombie villager, then I uh, originally wanted some way to just push the card up here and the zombie villager would get picked up. But as you saw when I did that, it, was, it doesn't always pick up the zombie villager automatically. And with the way this is set up, I couldn't manage to have it work very well. I can't put a piston... Uh, anywhere along here because the tripwire would set it off. The only thing I can think of to do is to put this tripwire maybe one level higher and have it instead of directly connected to the fence gate there it would be one level higher and attached to an RS latch so when the zombie dropped through it would trigger the trip lat the tripwire which would close it and then the zombie would no longer be 
on the tripwire so the RS latch would have would keep it closed. Then if you press the reject button, it would drop the zombie and then reset the RS latch so that this would open back up again. Um, but yeah, I just I guess I just didn't really feel like doing that. And then the other problem was is that with all of this, it becomes really cumbersome. And especially since I can't, I, I couldn't figure out how to make this thing with the minecarts work smoothly. So uh, without that, I, th I just decided, you know, I'm not going to make any more of this. Uh, I, I can use this just as it is and, you know, reject them one at a time and then keep the zombie villager when I do get it. So a uh, little bit uh, lazy on my part, essentially, but uh, don't really care. <laughs> But uh, that is my uh, zombie farm, and I am not going to be able to get that minecart back, which is really annoying. Um, I am going to get that minecart bat back if it's the last thing I do. Uh, no, maybe not. <laughs> this is funny. Push you in a little bit. There you go. All right, I got the minecart now. So anyway, this is my zombie farm. Uh, what I've done with my zombie spawner, this is my way of getting villagers. And of course, now I could just breed villagers, but I don't really want to do that either. Um, they may end up doing it naturally if I build a village, but that's uh, that's all besides the point. Uh, so, there you go. Thanks for joining me. Hope you liked it. I'll see you next time.